Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be installing Kali Linux version 2022.4 in VirtualBox on a Windows 11 PC. Before we get started, let's take a look at the minimum requirements. For RAM, the lowest that you can have is two gigs of RAM, four is recommended. For disk space, you're going to want at least 20 gigs of hard disk space, two CPU cores, the Kali Linux ISO image file. You need VirtualBox and the extension pack. Now, if you don't have that installed, you can check out this video and I'll walk you through the steps. All the steps and tools used in this video will be linked in the description below. If you find this video useful, please consider subscribing to the channel. You can also check out GeekRar Guides, which is my dedicated channel for running virtual machines. Now let's install Kali Linux. So I'm at the desktop of my Windows 11 PC. I'm going to open up VirtualBox. This is VirtualBox version 7. If you haven't installed this already, this is the latest version that's out. And you can, you can check out this video if you want me to walk you through the steps of getting this installed. So we have the Virtual Machine Manager already open. What we need to do is get the ISO image file for Kali Linux. So I'm going to open up the web page here. Kali.org is the page that I'm at right now. This is the home page for Kali Linux. Just have to click on the download link right over here. And then we have the options for installer images and virtual machines. Now I get asked a lot, why don't I use the virtual machine image? I have had a lot of issues getting this to run smoothly. That's not to say that it doesn't work. Maybe it's something with my PC, but I've never had a problem using an ISO image. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I recommend using this step. If you want to go ahead and install uh, the virtual image, go ahead and do that. So go ahead and click on this. It's going to take us over to the installer image section and I'll scroll down a bit here and we have the latest version of Kali Linux, which is 2022.4 and I'm going to be downloading the 64 bit and you can see over here we have the installer image, which is the ISO image file. 3.5 gigs. We're just going to click on the link and let it download. All images that have been downloaded will be in my Discord group. This is a private Discord group that I've launched. A uh, link will be in the description. It's for this image as well as all other images that I've used. So what I'll do is I'll jump over to the next step when this image has been downloaded. Okay, and the download's now complete. So I'll go to my downloads folder right over here. So here it is. This is the ISO image file. You just want to make sure you know exactly where you downloaded it because we're going to have to point to the folder in just a moment. I'll go ahead and minimize this and minimize this. And here we are inside our virtual box manager. So the first thing we're going to do is click on the new button because we're creating a new image and we're going to give it a name. I'm just going to call it Kali Linux 2022.4. I'll be leaving the folder as default. You can change that if you're running into space issues. Then we're going to be selecting the ISO image file. So click on the down arrow and click on the other button. And this is where you're going to want to locate your ISO image file that you just downloaded. Mine is in my downloads folder. So go ahead and select that and then click on open. Then what we can do is click on next. And for RAM, you need at least two gigs of RAM. Anything above this is going to be better and it's going to run smoother. So I'm going to go ahead and max it out inside this green space. And then for processors, I recommend at least T CPU cores, but if you can max this out as well, it's just going to run better for you. Then go ahead and click on next. For virtual hard disk space, you're going to need at least 20 gigs. It has 25 as default, which is good. You can go ahead and click on next. And then we have a summary over here of everything that we have. Uh, this all looks good. We can go ahead and click on finish. So you'll notice right over here, it's over here on the left hand side. We're just going to go in the settings and just do a few modifications. Click on the settings button. Uh, then we go into display. The only thing that we'll be adding in here right now is the video memory. We're just going to max this out in the green space. And then if you go over to USB, some users, if you're using different types of hardware like mouses and keyboards and you're running into issues, you can select USB 3.0. I'm going to leave mine at two. And then you can go ahead and click on OK. And we're ready to start the installation. So we want to make sure that the virtual machine over here is selected and then click on the start button. Inside the menu, we have a bunch of options here. We'll be selecting the graphical install. So go ahead and select that and then hit enter. And now we have the option to select a language. We'll be leaving the default as English. We'll be using mostly all default settings for the setup. Click on continue, uh, select your location. I'm just going to leave mine as United States. Click on continue and then American English is fine. Okay. For configuring the network, we have the host name as Kali. You can change that to anything you want. I'll be leaving everything as default. So I'll go ahead and click on continue. Uh, domain name, I'll be leaving blank. So for the full name, which is going to be any name that you want, I'm going to put in GeekWire and then click on continue. That'll also be my username. Click on continue. And now we can go ahead and type in a password. I always recommend having an alphanumeric password. Once you have that in there, you can go ahead and click on continue. Time zone is up next. Configuring the clock. I'm going to leave mine in the Eastern time zone. Click on continue. And we'll be using the guided use entire disk. And we'll have the default setting here. 
and we'll be using all files in one partition. And now we're ready to finish partitioning and write changes to disk. So we'll make sure that's selected and then click on continue. Write changes to disk, we can select yes, and then click on continue. And it's gonna go ahead and install the operating system. This might take a few minutes. What I'll do is I'll jump over to the next step. Now you get the option to customize your desktop environment. Uh, you can select whichever options you'd like. I'm gonna be leaving mine as default and then clicking on continue. And we're at the last step right now is to install the Grub Bootloader. I'm gonna be selecting yes over here and then clicking on continue. And then we're gonna be selecting our virtual drive in the list and then clicking on continue. The installation is now complete. We can click on continue to reboot the virtual machine. And what it'll do is it'll shut it down and then start it back up and we'll be back at the login screen. And we're back at the login screen right now this is where we're going to type in our username that we created during the installation and the password. And it's going to log us into the desktop. And what I'll do is I'll just go over to the view menu at the top and then select full screen mode, click on switch. And now we're in full screen mode. So we've just installed Kali Linux inside VirtualBox. You can go ahead and start using Kali Linux. All the default applications are listed in here. I'll be linking a blog post in the description to lay out everything that's new in this version. So you can go ahead and check that out. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.